So how many ways can you think of rotating an object in Cavalry? I've been thinking about this for a while. I just wanted to get an object and make it move in a circular pattern. If you just wanted to offset a, the pivot, you can then just rotate it as you normally would. It's pretty basic. Something very similar, we're just using a null object though and we're just going to offset our shape and rotate it around. In this instance we've just got a pathfinder and we just input a circle as the path and change the percentage and away we go. Things uh, take a little bit of a step up when we employ some math layers. That's what this tutorial is going to be all about. It's about how to use cosine and sine oscillators to create circular motion. So we can step through something like that and then end up with something like this. So I'll try and break it down as best as I can and um, please just bear with me. So first up, I'm just going to run through a basic kind of setup on this one. So I'm just going to use this with some maths nodes and I'm just going to create our first one here and I'm going to change this to sign and I might just right click on this and add frame as well. And I'm just going to rename this sign so I know what I'm doing. And I'm just going to duplicate this. And I'm going to add that into Y now as well. So I've got two and they're feeding into X and Y. If you hit play now, you can just see this very subtle motion. If I wanted to increase that a bit, I can just jump in here and hit multiply. I'm just going to link these secondary values. And if I do that, it's going to go crazy. So I'm just going to drop this down to say 10%. And it's just a circle moving on an angle. Not too exciting. But if I change this to cosine, now we have our perfect circle. I'm just going to rename this so I know what's up. So that's pretty simple. Um, pretty straightforward and sorry we've just got a couple of maths layers one set to cosine one set to sine and it works pretty easy we can just change this multiplying value here to if, change the radius and we can change the, the speed of it by uh, jumping in here okay so now i'm going to do this with the oscillator but i don't need a double math node to multiply the values i can just put the oscillator value straight into here and on this one, I'm just going to go, since it's minimum, I'll go negative 400. And then I'm just going to drag this into here. And I'm going to add an expression. Since this is the maximum, I can either go times negative 1, or I can just go minus bracket value. It's the same thing. So now if I hit play, we can just see our circle moving from left and right. I'm just going to jump in here and change this to sign so I know what's going on. And then I can just duplicate it. Change that to cosine. Oop. Change that to cosine. And I'm going to link this into the Y. And again, if I hit play, it's just going to go on an angle. So I'd better change that to cosine. And it's moving around. So the thing I've set up here is that these are not linked. So I'm just going to change this. So I'm just going to rename um, the initial one in position X as driver. So I know that if I change these values here, it'll also be mirrored down here. So I can just pop that into there. And I'll just delete this and get rid of the expression. And I'm just going to pop this into here. But things get a little trickier when we want to put this into a duplicator and use the 3D matrix to spin it on the position Z. So let's just jump in and see how we can do this. I'm just going to quickly show you how I did the numbering before we jump into the actual 3D matrix aspect of it. So first up, you just create your text shape and make it a child of your ellipse shape. 
then we're just going to jump into generator and go value. I'll just take this out of here because I don't need to duplicate it. And then on my number, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to put in context index. So then we just drop down precision and drop down padding. And then when I click on my ellipse shape and add it to a duplicator, you can see all those numbers have added up quite nicely. I'm going to change the distribution type down to a point. I'll beef up the values to uh, 15 or so. And now I'm just going to add a 3D matrix. So things are going to get a little tricky here. So you might need to pause things and just make sure we're all on the same page. Um, please forgive me. What we're going to do here is first up just link our position sign so position x sign driver to the position x and then we'll get the position z and put that into position z here. And nothing's happening because we're going to click this use levels button down the bottom. And then if we hit play, we can see our 14 just flying around. So I'm just going to jump in here straight away and change some things here. Uh, I'm just going to add an expression and just going to go divided by five. So yeah, so what I've done here is just add a little expression divided by five. And this just kind of minimizes the depth um, just to make it visually slightly nicer. A lot of these values in here, these are just values that you can just dial in and dabble, dabble with and uh, see how you go. So at the start of this tutorial, a little warning came up about magic numbers. Uh, this is where the magic numbers come in. Um, I can't even explain to you why this works, um, but it just does. Okay. So let's just go back to our driver and we've got our duplicator. And I'm going to grab our count and put this into the value offset. And then I'm going to right click and go expressions. 20 times pi divided by value. And I'm just going to hit enter. And I'm also going to drag this down into our stagger. Okay. And then I'm going to bring up our secondary one. And I'm just going to link these up here. You can link, link those however you want. So now we have this object spinning around. It's pretty cool. So we can move this up and down and you can see it is kind of 3D. Well, it is 3D. Wow, 2.5D. Okay. So, bum, 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 bum. On my other one, you may have noticed, I'll just go into those, I'll just share all the secrets. So um, I hope you appreciate that. Uh, if we wanted to rotate this, but keep this the same way, we can just drag this rotation and put it into the rotation Z. So that way when we rotate it, it's all gonna be the same. If we want to increase the radius of it, we can just click this here, change this here. So what I'm going to do here into my driver, I'm just going to remove that and I'm just going to put in a frame. And the reason I put a frame in here instead of adjusting this time scale is that because it stuffs up my value offset and my stagger. Okay, so that's, and I'm just going to disconnect this and then I'm just going to put this in here. So here's our frame. And I can just change this down to 20. And we've got a rotation that is a lot slower. Man, I feel like there's going to be some people that are hating me right now. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to rotate that down. And since this isn't like real 3D, I can just click on that and drag that back up. And uh, away we go. So the last thing I'm going to show you is how we can use or create a little bit of faux depth of field. Let's just jump into our duplicator 
and we're going to add a sub mesh and then in our sub mesh we're going to add a filter filter blur and we'll have to change the levels on this one just go text lines it seems to be okay but um, that might change and I'm just going to right click on this go value and value probably put it back to 10 and in our fall off we can just right click and add range fall off and by default it doesn't really give us what we want we're just going to, have to change this to in this instance I'm just going to do Yeah, how easy is that? We're expecting it to be that easy, were you? So yeah, so this, you can see here, it kind of pops out a little bit. I mean, it's still pretty cool. So another thing, it could be kind of handy just to bring up this range here and just have a bit of a play and just see where, just see how this affects the blur. So you can see here, it's just gonna make it pop too much. So if I'm just bringing it down like that, and if I play with this one, just play with that curve um, and uh, see how you go. Um, slightly different to how I did it initially, but the results are pretty much the same. Just have a bit of a play around. I, I think the best way to do it is probably to start off by creating that oscillator and just making a circle and linking everything up and then jumping into a 3D matrix and reconnecting it. Um, I guess the gotchas are making sure you've got use levels. Uh, make sure you name them just so it's easy to jump back and forth. Make sure also that your cosine is set to cosine and your sine is set to sine. Um, I also thought it was ha handy to have the driver. I also thought it was handy to have the oscillator um, driver labeled as well as such. Um, uh, one little, one more little thing I guess I could show you is talking about these magic numbers and do not even ask me to explain them. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so if I just delete this and put this at zero. Okay, so I feel like this is, I'm just going to put some, now I'm just going to quickly put some guides on just to help me eyeball this. And I'm just gonna a keyframe and then I'll come up to 60. And then I'm just gonna go plus 4.189. And then it's kind of put that slap bang in the middle of our next one. I'm just going to put the magic easing on it. And where are we? So yeah, we can just, oh. and I'm just going to loop after, loop after with offset. And then we have our little animation looping with things lined up. Cool. Uh, yeah. If you've got any issues, just keep it to yourself, figure it out, and um, don't ask me any questions in this thing. No, but seriously, thanks. I just want to say thank you for every like, every share, every comment, every thumbs up. It does make a difference. So please just um, feel free to share share this and share this channel and um, share, share it all. Let's just see how we go. Cool. Thanks a lot.